Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video I'm going to explain how to create your own tileset um, because it's a question, uh, it's a frequently asked question. And um, so it's quite easy with the tileset editor and I will just show you. So for this example we will create a dungeon tile set from uh, Zelda Link's Awakening because we already have a lot of tile set for, from um, Zelda Link to the Past in particular a lot of dungeon tile sets so um, you, can, you could also create your own graphics if you are good at this at pixel art but this is really not my case and it's not the point of this tutorial. So um, let's go on the website vgmaps.com. If you don't know it, it's a great resource. You can find a lot of uh, of um, graphics from actually a lot of maps from all all games or almost all games. So if you go to the handheld section and the Game Boy section, Zelda Link's Awakening, Zelda Link's Awakening DX, we will use the Tail Cave graphics to make a tile set. So I copy the image and then you can paste it in your favorite image editor. So for me it's GIMP. Maybe it's something else for you. It really does not matter uh, which editor you want. And the idea will be to um, pick all uh, small pieces of graphics from this map into a new image. So our new image will have this size, 512, it's more than big enough. So this tutorial is not about how to use uh, an image editor, but uh, I, I assume that you already know how to use your, your favorite one. I will just show a grid of 16 by 16 so that we can understand these, understand how tiles are organized. 16 by 16, show grid and also a line on the grid. Okay, so if you look closer, um, you can see that everything is aligned on 16 by 16 squares. So the idea is to pick every basic piece to understand every basic piece of uh, the dungeon. So we have the. I'm starting with the walls, of course, the most important. Four corners. And the sides. I'm doing it like this. It's just my convention, but you can do as you want. And you also have the, the reverse walls, the reverse corners, like this. And this. So I'm doing it quickly just to show you the ID. So we have rules. Let's save the file into. So you have to save it in your in your tile sets folder, and it should be called um, whatever you want to call your tile set. So in our case, tile cave dot tiles dot png. So the ID of the tile set and then dot tiles dot png. And for each tile set, there is also an optional file .entities.png. 
um, it can be used to create dynamic entities with sprites that depend on the tile set because the tile set is the skin of a map and most dynamic entities look the same on all tile sets but some of them uh, in particular in Zelda Link to the Past change depending on the, the tile set like doors of in, in dungeons and um, blocks so you you can see the the dot entities dot png examples if you want but in this video I will just make the dot tiles dot png so all static and graphics with this skin so then we have the floor tiles have this one this one have some smaller walls here actually they are they are 8 by 8 oops 8 by 8 these ones I put put this next to the wall maybe um let's don't forget the the ceiling here maybe I want to put these like this so you can use any image editor you want it's just better if you can show a grid of 16 by 16 in this example and to make the grid man magnetic we have blocks here these statues I'm not putting any enemy or chests because these are dynamic entities. I'm still putting blocks because some of the blocks are not always dynamic. So these are just tiles if they don't move. If you remember the game, these ones don't move, but this one does. So actually, the block in my games is always both in the dot tiles dot png file and in the dot entities dot png file and then we have the holes starting with this or maybe here this one here and there is another kind of hole here So it's not really important if I forget some tiles, it's just to show you the idea. And we have the torches here, also the torches from walls. Um, torches are animated actually, normally in this game, but uh, we don't have Unfortunately, we don't have the animation here in the image from VG Maps. So if you, if you really want the animation and you can't find them, you will have to use an emulator and do the work yourself. But um, yeah, regular tiles can be animated. Uh, it's the case of of these ones. They have three frames that repeat. Same for these ones. So they can stay r really regular tile. Regular tiles. They don't have to be special dynamic entities. Except if you want more options, more animation options. Um yeah, what else? Maybe this Um, so if you want you can actually divide this a lot more because first this part is exactly the same as this part oops um, this little 8x8 square is repeated a lot of times here here etc 
this is also repeated here and here etc and all of this is the same as this um, so yeah it will allow you to save some space in the PNG file but um, the space really does not matter they are loaded very quickly and and this one is a very small even in very large PNG files um, there is no performance issue and there is no limit in the size you can see that uh, we have really huge PNG files for for outside tile set in our projects but uh, yeah do as you want if you divide these more it will be it will also allow you to to do something slightly different that than exactly uh, this okay what did I forget it's probably not really important um, so doors would probably be in the .entities.png file but um, we won't do it in this tutorial okay save and then when you create the t a tile set from here, new tile set um, yeah, new tile set, tail cave the dot tiles dot png file is automatically detected uh, because I put the correct name here and for now there is no pattern there are no patterns so we just have to create them by tracing drawing some rectangles like this so maybe it's a bit boring especially when they all have the same size the a link to the past ones have more complicated complicated sizes like 24 by 24, 16 by 24, 24 by 16, etc. Eight by eight for this one. This one is for the, the ceiling, so we'll put it by default on a higher layer than the other ones. This one is a regular tile, okay, traversable. It's just that you will probably put a teletransporter on it. Holes, um, sorry, hole here. Hole. So you could actually uh, make this one eight by eight, and this one eight by eight as well. Also this one, by the way. You could probably save some space, but it's easier to use if they have uh, consistent sizes. I can say this from experience. And again, you don't really care about the, the size of your oops PNG file. Same for the torches; they could they could be just like this so you do as you prefer but especially with Game Boy graphics um, everything is really really almost always 16 by 16 okay Um, so this is how you create recreate a tile set. Then you can create a map from the tile set. Tile cave test with the tile set. Tile cave, of course. Um, so there is something about resizing tiles. You see, you can resize this wall the wrong way. 
and even this corner um, you, so you should really use the repeatable property here actually there are keyboard shortcuts um, oh, that you should learn because you will need them a lot repeatable in both directions only horizontally, only vertically or non-repeatable at all so this we, these ones should not be repeatable. This one's not repeatable. Uh, this one, all of these ones. You can do multiple selection. So by default, everything is repeatable in all directions. These ones should only be repeatable horizontally, and these ones only vertically and this one's only horizontally as well and I think and this one's probably not never repeatable oh and by the way also if you change something here for example you you realize that you forgot something and you add it you save the typeset editor automatically detects that the PNG file was changed and it allows you to refresh the typeset. Yeah. Uh, okay. I currently have a very slight annoying bug. Oh no, it works. I thought I, I couldn't select here. Oh, I can, but uh, it doesn't work here. So, yeah, it will be fixed very soon. Maybe it's already fixed uh, at the time you are watching this video. I had to close and re reopen the typeset. refresh here if it has changed so now it resizes li like we want we can finish our example of room here okay it's just a very simple example so yeah you can resize a full room very easily if you have set the correct properties of your patterns here the correct repeatable property okay and one more thing um, you can give names to your patterns here because by default the name is one two three four in order of creation but when you make a lot of edits uh, delete and recreate type sets uh, your you lose c control of their name, their ID, so it becomes hard to make um, compatible tile sets. F uh, what I mean by that is that all our dungeons, tile set, cave tile set, house, the whole all patterns have meaningful name here. Here, wall this one is wall dot corner dot one. This one as well. So this is what identify a, a tile, uh, what identifies a, a pattern when it is placed on a map. And this is how it works when you um, change the tile set of an existing map. For example, I can open this one and then change the tile set to another but compatible one like this and if your tile pattern has the same name in both style set it will work so it's very nice and you can even copy paste tiles of from a tile set to an another i mean from a map with a different tile set for example um i don't know from this one let's take this wall for example and paste and when you paste it it has the destination tile set okay so and you can rename tiles by pressing the F2 key uh, so yeah you can you know you know how to create tile sets now again uh, 
I recommend to carefully set all properties. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this episode. Um, if you have any question, feel free to comment. And see you next time. Bye.